Anna, uh, it is a pleasure for me to have uh, you here today. Uh, you as an executive member of uh, the FAE, so the, the Global Young Federation of the Green in, in Europe, and uh, I'm happy to have you here today for the interview. Hi, I'm also happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pleasure. So, um, Starting on our interview, I would like you to introduce yourself for our readers, for the EcoSprinted readers. Well, as you can hear, I'm Ivana or Ivanka. I have two interpretations of my name. <laughs> Originally, I'm from Ukraine and my member organization is Green Yes of Ukraine. Before I joined Greens, I have like a long story of activism because I start as uh, Honestly, a really common thing for Ukrainian activists. Uh, I started in 2014 uh, when my country turned to more democratic. Uh, yeah, it was nearly eight years ago uh, when I started with ecological activism because I uh, from western part which, of Ukraine, which in mountains. So ecological issue is something what I always see and honestly yeah. Uh, I realized that if you want to change something, you have to do something. And after, yeah, and after I started to learn more about democratic mechanisms and procedures, after I started to learn a bit about feminism, and when I moved to Kiev, I started, uh, it was 2018 uh, or 2017. Yeah, it was 2017. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I started to learn uh, political science and realized that left ideology is something like more close to my soul. I started to work on topic because my university moved from Crimea. That's why I'm really close to topic of Donbass and Crimea. And that's how I started to be more involved, involved more, more active politically. I had several internships in ministries and after maybe four years ago, I meet first time Greens and realize that it's uh, it's like um, everything what I do every day in my life, in my activism, and I realize that it's something that I want to work in. And after my first FAG event and last, <laughs> it was first and last real life FAG event. Uh, it was emo surfing skills, if I'm not mistaken. And after pandemic started, so I worked online meet a lot of amazing people after start to coordinate feminist network and slowly and slowly was super involved in FIG and after become EC member as for now. This and is a long long trajectory indeed it's like an intense one intense trajectory yeah. because uh, you have started not that long time ago but you have follow many 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 things at the yeah. same time and in, being involved in many different organizations this is really interesting. Yeah, but to be honest, only in FIG, I felt like it's not only organization when I, where I work, but also organization, it, it feels like it's a big family, especially now it's, I, I really feel it mm, like I work in my regular job, but I didn't feel so many support as in FIG, like seriously, people who I met maybe once or two times just texting and, hey, how are you? Can I help you some? It's really amazing. This it's, is nice. So, how would you describe yourself in three or five, uh, three, four, five words, Ivana? Uh, <laughs> I know it's like, difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit difficult. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I can think a bit. Uh, okay, maybe let's say uh, active, sometimes hyperactive, because um hard working i guess working. of course so. with everything you have said for sure <laughs> um honestly i i always think that i'm young because it's not only about age it's only also how you feel inside because uh, like oh. when you're young and progressive it's always amazing no matter how old are you are. and uh you will be always young yeah. at heart <laughs> And I always um, say that I'm green because it's something what I do in all my active, <laughs> activist life. So of course, this is nice, nice mixture of uh, active. 
So uh, what will be your main focus for this mandate on, on the FIA organization? What would you like to, to focus on? Well, when I came, just came to FAGEC, uh, first I wanted to focus on Eastern region because uh, even before I felt like we have this difference between West and East. It's not something bad, but uh, we have to build like strong communication because there are so many topics. We have different feeling because we have different political context, especially when we talk like about West uh, and East. Mm -hmm. So we have different condition. We have, uh, it's, it's always really sad to, uh, to say, but we have not really nice neighbor. <laughs> For now we have Kui, but really a lot. And uh, I still work on it. There is still a lot of work. And during mandate, I realized that I also want to focus on feminism because I, I, it's, it's my love to feminist network talking inside me. But there is also, again, we connect um, returning to regional questions that we have different contexts. And it's really interesting to talk because, for example, East feminism not so much developed. Okay. Uh, as in West. So it's amazing uh, exchange. And maybe last um, last month, uh, when this situation in my country started, I realized that we have to build on strong communication on military position because um, yes, it's really nice that some country uh, safe, and I hope uh, no no one from our European countries and actually in all world will never again face this. Uh, war but we have to get strong communication on it uh, among the different organizations and the different countries yeah. this is really nice realize that in greens we not always agree on all points and mm -hmm. for we saying it to all, all world we have to understand various our position and maybe red flags and also digital security i never of course. expect how much it can effect when I started to face when you literally thinking that one not right message can cost somebody's life so it's You're really right. it's really something that I want to focus maybe next month that nobody knows if I will want <laughs> it's a secret for now let's let's cross fingers that uh, <laughs> it will be that <laughs> like that okay so what is the role of the green movement in the place that you are right now what, what do you think it will be the role for, not for now only, but for the future too, Ivana? Well, for now, Greens take amazing volunteer position, not only Green, yes, also Green Party. Like I text people with who I work and everybody responding, I'm volunteering there, there and there. And it's really amazing that we also, it maybe it's again green in my soul, talking it's really nice that it's not really connected to military mm -hmm. because i always think that uh, on this have to work organization who actually focus on military question who have experience and knowledge in emergency situation but i really really happy that we work in uh, on humanitarian questions medical and so on and i think when war is end then we will have more stable situation, uh, mm -hmm. great to get a really strong position because um, there will be a lot of question about democratical movement, about there will be a, a lot of question about humanitarian, uh, human rights and so on and so on. And uh, yes, it's really amazing that nationalist organizations started to stand to protect, uh, but, uh, mm, but there is a lot of <laughs> for their political positions. Of course, and, and this is hard to, yeah, to find really, a good way. And honestly, one thing that I'm really happy about is that uh, Ukrainians always fighting for their rights. And uh, it's really helpful. And I really think that Greens have to, uh, maybe for now, because of context, uh, we, I guess we will not manage first election to get main position, but because... Okay. Uh, um 
green movement in Ukraine have to be developed a lot. It's a lot of work, but uh, at least we have to get strong position because our country will need more democratic and human oriented development. This is really like a strong explanation, like a, how to say this deep explanation of uh, the inside politics. Thank you, Ivana. So another question that uh, we would like to know, uh, how do you feel about that is, how do you think that we can achieve a more stronger LGTB rights for the future? Well, uh, I think the biggest issue for LGBTQI mm -hmm. plus movement, uh, what I see in Ukraine, what I see in other countries uh, is a strong anti-LGBTQI propaganda. And when you talk to people, just uh, I, I can I can't say how many people I explain that it's not people who want to make you gay or, or lesbian. And uh, first of all, there have to be strong, um, I think, educational campaign because, uh, for example, when I, I'm not sure if I find this interview with our president here because uh, he told really, really interesting thing and uh, all people have to understand it, like, don't touch these people. They don't uh, go and don't do anything with your relationship. So we live in free country where you can choose your orientation, when you can choose and your, your identity. Life. Of course. Yeah, your, your identity. And um, uh, for me, I, I don't know, I sometimes I have this thing in my head that somebody pays this anti-LGBTQI organization because I don't understand why people are so aggressive. Maybe because um, I, I really don't understand and there have to be strong educational uh, system explaining because I realized uh, when you started to explain people with um, uh, some facts uh, from science, people start to be more open and uh, they, they are not so much aggressive about the LGBTQI plus community. And also, it's again, it's a huge uh, work because we still have to write challenge for protest. It's amazing challenge. I honestly proud for all LGBTQI plus uh, activists because they do amazing stuff. Uh, they are never surrendering. This is really yeah, important. Yeah, and uh, as I see people more and more supporting, so it's showing again that we choose right way. Nice. Um, what do you feel how we can uh, make a strong uh, collaboration and a strong have to arrive to have in the future a strong representation of southern countries and eastern countries in the different national and or worldwide organization? Because this is really hard and it's another challenge. Well, um... Uh, why there is a difference between, again, between the South, East and West, because um, uh, Green Movement, maybe I'm wrong a bit, but uh, Green Movement on West a bit more developed and it have a bit longer history because, okay, our party has 30 years, but it was presented in Parliament only once. And we are currently only in our way of developing and we're doing our may, maybe not first step, but some, somewhere in the middle. And also we have to understand context when there is so many nationalistic propaganda, when in our country democracy is still in process of building, especially if, if you talk about East, but also as I talked with my South colleagues, they also saying that it's not so perfect and we have... <laughs> it's not, you are right. <laughs> yeah, we we are right. sisters and brothers in the same like challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it's a moment where we really need best support to take their experience, but yeah. We have to understand that Western experience not always working in Eastern ex experience. Because in some Eastern country, when you started to say uh, you're LGBTQI plus friendly, so you will have a big issue. It's <laughs> really sad to say. Because we're still in process uh, when we're explaining what, why feminist 
that feminism is not something bad, and it's not only women who hate men. And uh, it's, yeah, it so is hard, and it's, it will yeah. be a process for sure. Yeah, it, it, it will. It still will be a long process. But when I see all amazing green activists, I understand this process in right hands, and all we can do is support, is to share experience, and help with building up together. Yeah. <laughs> And now we would like to know some recommendations about a book or podcasts or films or series that you would like to, to share with us, Ivana, for the war, like our readers. Well, honestly, uh, last month I um, started to listen again uh, our Green Via, v- I guess, uh, uh, Green Podcast. It's amazing. I recommend again. <laughs> everybody to listen it also i realized last year that uh, without strong understanding um, uh, of history we will not able to build up a future because okay. so i recently started to listen really nice it's uh, it's called a world uh, history podcast uh, it's really nice. It's explaining in uh, really simple words why is this happening, why uh, this country has this historical context. Also, I always saying, uh, especially when you political activists, there is a, a classical political science book. It, it's maybe mm, not really um, green or, in, or orientated, but. Uh, to fight with uh, some evil thing, you have to understand how this evil thing uh, works. So that's why I always recommend it to learn how uh, capitalism was uh, built. It's actually Marx's book because it's there is a lot of really interesting thing when uh, you started to think about. You start to better a bit understand economical part of greens. And the uh, book about capitalism, honestly, I don't have really one which I prefer, but just everything which connected because when you fight with evil, you have to <laughs> with what you fight. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And now, Ivana, uh, we would like to know uh, how we can handle the current situation of Ukrainian for having a a better situation for the country and the people in Ukraine, what we can do as European, because we are at the end, all Europeans, what we can do and how we can help this country and these people that are our people too. Well, I was, I will start from more personal. Uh, actually, one thing I, I really ask uh, all people do is uh, when you try to donate, it's really nice and it's very really appreciated, but check uh, foundings. Uh, check their reports because um, we faced there there is so many fake foundation which which pretend to help especially okay. when I work with some Austrian organization uh, we have to get three tons of humanitarian medical support in border mm-hmm. we get uh, one thousand kilogram and organization which pretend to help us just decided to stall. Thank you to Embassy of Ukraine in Austria. We managed to, to get it back. But to show again, there is a lot of fake organization. Also, really, really important to talk about uh, what's happening, about situation, to explaining. Because, for example, yesterday I was super annoyed in my Instagram because uh, when I open my request, I have like two parts. Or is this uh, people who hate starting to say that Ukrainian hate Russian, Russian don't do anything. It's fake. <laughs> Just please try to share this reality because like um, nobody hates Russian speaking people. Because uh, my best friend is Russian speaking uh, person. And to be honest, uh, Ukrainian don't hate Russian. They hate uh, Russian who's texting in our social medias with message that it's better that your city be, will be bombed. And yeah, it's it's really happened, it's really sad. And also there is a lot of Ukrainians currently in Europe and they also need support. And when you know people who move to your country, 
usually after this horrible situation, people a bit ashamed <laughs> and maybe scared to say that I need your help. Just uh, came and asked, hey, how are you? Maybe you need something. Especially there's a lot of people who don't know the language, so it's double challenge for them. And for more political, um, it's uh, more about campaign because uh, a lot of organizations have their maps in parliaments or in local um, government. And, uh, and it's really important to push them to do at least anything. Uh, okay, Europe, um, Europeans started to block SWIFT, but it's not fully blocked and they still have access for it. Okay, maybe some somebody will say that it's unfair to Russian, but in situation when they started to started war, actually it's maybe not right to say started war because war started in 2014, uh, to be honest. And uh, sanction it's really helped because we see that army started to be more weak and weak. Uh, so it's really important to push your maps to be more to have more clear position to push also government to to have a common a common idea in, in europe about the situation this yeah. is also important and speak up about that yes yeah, yes it's hard it's painful but it's, it's really needed because if people don't understand situation they don't understand why they need to do anything and oh, maybe uh, one important thing to understand if if something went wrong and if uh, ukraine will not manage to finish this war next will be poland next will be slovakia next will be hungary who don't have so so strong army and next will be half of euro not to show their face because we yeah, right. yeah we asked to close sky maybe for months but we see real face of nato it's also important to talk that okay russia start war but we still have usa who also doing not really nice things. <laughs> you are right ivana so i want to thank you uh, you for the time being and um, being with me today for this uh, short interview and it has been really useful i have learned a lot about the Ukraine situation, Eastern Europe situation, and I think this is an enrichment for our organization in Europe to have a person like you within the organization. And I hope to see you soon in person or in another virtual meeting. Thank you so much, uh, Ivana, for, for taking the time for, for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.